right, folks, welcome back. If you're new to the channel, thanks for stopping by and checking out the video. We have another beautiful day up here in Maine. It's bright and sunny, a little bit of wind, uh, pretty mild temps. We're taking a little break from riding, and I'm going to show you guys what I carry for a pocket survival kit. This is an Altoids tin filled with some basic survival gear, and uh, this is a backup to a backup, if you call it that. I carry a main kit most everywhere I go, hunting, fishing, snowmobiling, ice fishing. I carry a backup kit in whatever vehicle I'm in, whether it's a uh, road vehicle, a snowmobile, a boat, I always carry a backup. And this is my backup kit uh, for the sled here. This stays right in the sled. I'm not gonna bust this out. Um, I'll link that at the end of the video and down in the description if you guys wanna check that out. And I like to have a small kit right on me at all times. I like to have one in a pocket, whether it's a pant pocket, jacket pocket, I like to have one on me. I've had a few times over the years where I had a survival kit with me, had something happen and weren't able to access that survival kit. Just a real quick example of that. My buddy and I were fishing a river early spring, water was high. We flipped our small boat and the boat went upright. All our gear went down river, including my survival kit and I had nothing on me, uh, not even a knife, a lighter, nothing. Everything was floating down the river. And since that time there, which was, geez, almost 20 years ago now, I've always had a pocket carry survival kit just for exact situations like that. People are always getting into situations where they have some basic survival gear and they get separated from it and they have nothing on their person. This is a winter kit. This is a fall slash winter kit. I do change this around slightly between the fall and winter compared to the spring and summer. Um, it's about 70% the same between all seasons, but there are a few differences once we get into the fall and winter that uh, I put into the kit here. Uh, for obvious reasons, you know, we're up here in Maine, we're in, the, uh, we're in the north and we have snow for many months, we have cold for many months, it's not uncommon to be negative 20, negative 30 at night. For me, number one priority is fire, fire making. Um, so I have quite a bit of fire making redundancy in this kit and I wanted good, uh, solid, quality equipment in this kit so I took the quality versus quantity route I wanted good quality equipment in this that I could rely on if needed I didn't want a bunch of cheap cheesy you know chintzy trinkety type of stuff in this kit I wanted good quality equipment um, so with that folks let's get into it and I'll show you guys what I have in the kit here um, as you can see I have some duct tape and electrical tape on the outside of this tin here this is version I don't even know. I would say version like probably 10.0. I've changed this thing constantly over the years and I used to carry uh, both uh, tape inside my kit here and I just found that it took up just enough space where it made some of the other components not fit quite as well. So the last, I don't know, it may be two years, I've started running it on the outside here. And these are um, on here so they're snug enough where they won't fall off but easy enough where I can pull them off relatively easily. And I honestly can't remember what I put for a liner in there. It must have been like a, I don't know, cooking sheet or something. I put something in there so the tape wouldn't stick to the tin. But this is probably, I don't know, there's seven or eight wraps of duct tape on there. And about the same here with the electrical tape. Same basic concept. I just put a little bit of a liner here so it wouldn't stick to the tin. And one thing that people uh, sometimes don't realize about duct tape is this stuff is, is pretty flammable. You can actually use this as a tinder source. If you rip off a few small pieces and you know put them in your tinder, um, hit these with a match, this will extend your fire starting capabilities um, really well. This stuff works really well and if this stuff is soaking wet, you hit it with a match and it'll still light up really well. So getting right to the tin here, um, I have a little pull tab with a wrap of electrical tape. This is just to keep it as waterproof as it can get. Uh, we'll get this open. Hopefully the wind doesn't blow everything away. So right on top here, I have two band-aids. And I'll give you guys a good shot of what this looks like all packed up. So you can see this is pretty well freighted. Right on top here, I have two weatherproof matches. You can get a fire going in just about any situation with these matches here. And I'm going to kind of work right from the top down. 
So this is a roll of braided fishing line. This got to be, I wouldn't be surprised if there's 100 feet of line. And I have that attached to some 12 pound fluorocarbon. So that's just a little fishing line kit there. I have two Benadryls. I chose to put Benadryl in here just in case it's an allergic reaction. This is a very important thing to have. All right, so now we're back to a couple more matches. Them are also strike anywhere matches. This right here is a compass. This is a nice uh, little, I think it's called a watch compass. It's durable. It's been in this kit for a couple years and it's still reading north fine. I check this every month or two. Anytime I, uh, anytime I go out for a big trip, I always check this and it's, it's always read true. And I'm gonna link most of this stuff down in the description so you guys can check this stuff out. But that's a very, very durable compass there. And next we have just a uh, mini Bic lighter, nothing fancy there. I do have a little piece of electrical tape going down under the push button here, just to make sure that doesn't uh, get compressed in there and dump all the butane. And next we have this Olight. This is a nice durable little light and it actually has two different brightnesses. Um, right here, this first setting, will last many hours. Um, this is enough just to kind of get you out of a pinch. And if you need more light, you can give it a twist and you got many more lumens. And this is actually rechargeable, which is handy. You don't have to worry about batteries. So next is a Buck Phantom 284. This is a near full size knife. I mean, this isn't a, a full size, but this is a nice sturdy, durable knife here. I wanted a sturdy knife. I didn't want to go with something like a razor blade or something like that. I wanted an actual knife that had a nice positive lock on it, a nice handle. And you guys saw that it fit really well in this tin here. I did have to shave a little bit of this grip down here and a little bit off the top. But I mean, it was just maybe a quarter inch there and a quarter inch there and it fits in fine. But nice durable knife. So fire making number three, I have a little section of a ferro rod, a little piece of tape with just a little fluorescent piece of uh, ice fishing line there, just in case, you know, if I happen to be using this and I drop it, uh, this just gives me a little extra visibility. And just a little section of wire. This is actually, this is actually fishing leader wire. I put that in there for, I don't know, in case I had to, I don't know, maybe set out a trap or, you know, fix something, you know, this would be, you know, kind of handy to have. So this is a little assortment of tungsten fishing weights and ball bearing swivels. This goes with the fishing kit there. And this is a, just a cut down mirror. Um, Nothing fancy. I actually can't even remember where I got this mirror from. Uh, this is just kind of a standard mirror that I cut down to fit in the kit here, just to give a little bit of signaling if I need to signal. A striker for the matches. All right, so a folded up section of tin foil. Um, you can use this for many things from signaling to, um, you know, you can collect water in it. It's just a handy little thing to have. I know that's gonna blow away, so maybe I'll just do something like that. And these right here are very handy. These are reflective trail markers, but they have a little piece of metal in them. It's kind of like a twist tie. These things are good for market trail. They're good for, if you have a cut, they're good to like twist a cut closed. I've actually used these for that before, and they actually work really good for that. These are really handy to have. And one more match that rolled around from the other ones and we're basically through the biggest stuff here and just a couple of these utility hooks but these are from some uh, fish and lures that I make and I put these in here just because they don't take up much space and I don't know I just figured I'd be able to use them for something so the last thing if you look at the inside of the tin here see some electrical tape I'm looking through my camera I can't tell if that's picking up and you see some electrical tape there this is where I keep my fishing hooks. I have 
quite a selection of fishing hooks. Attached there. I don't know if you can see it that well. There's two, four, six, eight, ten. There's ten right there. And if you see here, I just put some more electrical tape just to give this hinge here a little bit of waterproofing. It's not going to be completely waterproof, but you know, in case I happen to get wet, it'll keep a little bit um, of that water out. So I have six hooks here. You can see they're quite a bit bigger than the other ones. Um, an assortment of different types of hooks, but you know, in case I get in a pinch somewhere, um, you know, it's good to have you know good selection of hooks. But that's basically it right there, folks. You know, that's my little pocket survival kit. And I don't know if you guys caught that. You, you can use the inside of this container to do a little bit of uh, signaling, but this will throw a, a decent flash if needed. Uh, there you have it, folks. There's my Altoids tin survival kit. I've been carrying this for years, and like I said, I've been carrying other variations of this, you know, for 20 years, ever since we flipped in that river. I've always carried something in my pocket. And we're gonna wrap it up there, folks. That was just a real quick video on what I carry on my person anytime I go in the woods or on the water. Uh, just gives me a little extra peace of mind in case I get separated from my main survival kit. Like um, I said earlier, you know, it does happen. It's happened to me, it's happened to countless other folks. It gives me some peace of mind knowing that there's something right on my person whenever I go out. Again, that is just my winter kit. Uh, I do change that around in the spring. Once we get away from these cold temps, I do change that around slightly. So I'll do a video in the spring on what my kit looks like then. Up here in Maine in the winter time, my number one priority is fire. That's why I have a lighter, matches, and a ferro rod. Uh, just in case if I ever get into like a long-term situation or, you know, say if that lighter gets drenched and the matches get drenched and they don't work, you know, that, that ferro rod will. So I'd like to have some redundancy there versus, you know, sticking a bunch of like, I don't know, just little tiny things in there that, that look good on paper, but really won't be all that functional. You know, if you're in 20, 30 below zero temps, you know, freezing to death. You know, I like to have several ways of getting a fire going. But uh, that's enough talking for this one, folks. Uh, we're gonna wrap it up here. If you guys have any suggestions, anything you'd add or change, feel free to leave them in the comments. We're gonna sign off there, folks. Thanks for watching. We're gonna sign off there, folks. Thanks for watching. And we'll see you guys on the next one.